I'm imagining the first one here, problem one, you got right. Um, although I hate to tell you this, but grade eights probably would even get this right because they resort to, if they don't know what to do, they just multiply all the numbers in the question and give that as their answer. So um, in this case, they would fluke out and get it right. Here you have four choices to make and you have a certain number of choices for each one. I hate to tell you this, but all of these are that same thing if you can break it down to the individual choices. It's when the thing is asking you for something that doesn't seem like it's individual choices. Two digit numbers, well, you gotta pick something to go here and you pick something to go here, right? You have individual choices the same way. If you're trying to count how many two digit numbers, and I, it, we started with this two digit numbers because you can actually think about how many there are, right? There's from 10 to 99, there's 90 different two digit numbers. If you uh, think about it, there's 10 different possible digits that can go here, right? Anywhere from zero to nine. There's only nine different things that can go here because you can't put a zero first or people don't, you know, zero five, people don't call that a two digit number, right? So there's only nine things that can go there. That gives you your 90. The second one gives you some restrictions can you guys uh, who are talking please not do that? This one gives you a pool of only a certain number of digits to choose from, but it's the same idea here. Um, you can choose any of them except for zero to be the first one, so five different things. And it says repetitions are allowed, so any one of the any one of the digits can go there. So five times six, because there's six different digits. If repetitions are not allowed, then you probably should think about starting with the one that, uh, I, you don't always have to start by thinking about how many you can pick here, but think about the one that has a restriction on it. This, this spot has a restriction in that it can't be zero, right? This can be one, three, five, seven, or nine, right? What can go here? Why is this five now and not six? It can be any of them except for what? Itself. Whatever you used first here, right? It could be any of them except for the one that you put in the first spot. So if you put one thing in the first spot, think how many are left over for the second spot. There were six of them to begin with, so whichever one you put in the, in the first spot, that one's gone. It doesn't matter which one it is. Just think, well, if I take one of them out, I have five left. Right, if you take one of them away, okay, any of them except what was used for the first digit, right? The thinking becomes hard because you're thinking about things where you don't even know what you put in the first spot. If you write, you know, it, if you're in doubt, write them all out on a few questions and think about it, right? I mean, 30 things, maybe you don't want to write them all out, but you could write out an organized list here. It wouldn't take that long. One, 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 three, one, five, one, seven. I guess I forgot one, zero, right? One, nine, there's six. Start with three. You get the same, you get the same number of things here, right? Three, zero, three, one, three, five, three, seven, three, nine. You'd write a list and you'd show, you know, you'd see where the 30 comes from. Okay, this would be five zero five one five three five seven five uh, nine. And uh, am I missing something there? No. If you kept going with that, you'd find the you'd see the rest of them there. Okay. Um, this one is the same type of thing. Okay. This one is the first one where people I think tend to have some problems with it. The most common wrong answer here is how many different po possible patterns are 2 times 7 equals 14. You laughed before when I said about the grade 8s when I said if you roll a dice and you flip a coin and how many different things can happen if, if there's a, you know, you're doing both of them together. And I said grade 8s say, well, there's six different things here and there's two different things there. So there's uh, 6 plus 2 is eight different things, right? Well, there's not, right? There's You can get heads and then any one of the numbers on the on the dice, or you get tails in any one of the numbers on the dice. You multiply. You don't 
You don't add them if you're both doing them both together, right? There's 12 different things that can happen. But then suddenly for this, I think you resort to not thinking about it. My, my uh, hint to you or my recommendation is break it down into the individual choices. Don't just try to answer it without thinking through it. If there's seven different questions that have to be, uh, that each have a choice of what they can be, before you try to um, make it, answer it quickly, think about, well, here's your seven things. It's sort of like a seven digit, not number, but a seven digit or seven letter sequence, right? It's a seven letter sequence, right? The answer key. How many different patterns are possible? And how many choices are there for each of those boxes? There's two, right? Each one, each can be a T or an F, right? So there's two for each of them. If you're choosing, you know, th think about just the simplest case here of two, right? If you have two questions, well, you could have true and then true, or you could have true and then false, or false and then true, or you could have false and then false. There's, there's four different things if you have that. If you expand this now to uh, to include three questions, well, there's lots, right? Because you could have any one of these four and false as the next one, right? Or you could have any one of those first four and true as the next question. There's eight different things. As soon as you include the next one, there's eight different things, all right? I'm not going to write this out again, but that's the same thing there. There's eight different things. If you added another question up here, right? If we added another one there, every time you add in a question here, it adds, it, it doubles. In this case, it doubles, right? You're multiplying. It's exactly the same as before. People get, I don't know if you try to jump ahead to an answer too quickly or something, but you don't think about the individual choices. It's the same thing as before. Just, I think for a lot of people, just drawing the boxes for each individual choice really helps. All right? So there's going to be 128. Well, that's that's for that. What's the probability that uh, that you're going to guess them all correctly? Well, if there's 128 different answer keys and you just randomly fill one out, you have a 1 out of 128 chance, right? 1 out of 128 chance that you will get it right. That you'll get all of them right, okay? Um Let's try this one. Now Now that you can do that one, you should be able to do this one, right? This is not, uh, don't try to jump ahead again and think, well, there's, um, this, this, this is sort of kind of some scaffolding to try and guide you through this a little bit. You have seven questions. See, the grade eight would answer what you answered here, which is just seven times, times four, right? I'm not trying to make you feel bad, but... I want you to think about it. Don't just try to jump ahead. Some of you try to jump ahead too quickly. How many possible answers are there for each question? For each. There's four, right? There's whatever, A, B, C, or D, or however it's listed, right? Think about even just two questions, right? There's seven questions, so... I know maybe it seems silly, but I really think you should think about it as a sequence of letters, right? Sequence of choices. If there's four for each of them, well, I mean, it's, it's very, you know, basically the same as the previous question, but this is going to be four to the seventh now, not two to the seventh, because there's four for each one, right? Every time you add a, a, a choice like that, it multiplies the number by four. So you can get to a pretty big number pretty quickly just by allowing uh, different things like that. Uh, what is this, by the way? 384. So that's a lot. I mean, that's a lot different, right? Just allowing four different choices for each one rather than two different choices, it makes a huge difference, right? Thank you. It's over, uh, you know, a hundred times more just by making four choices rather than two. Your odds are pretty good of getting a perfect score if it's seven true/false questions. Well, not pretty good, but they're better than this, right? It's it's not going to happen very often this way, because this is one in sixteen three eighty four, all right? Using the fundamental counting principle, just break down the choices of whatever you're working on, whatever you're looking at, into individual things, okay? And then go from there. 
Now, as I said, there isn't a lot of practice in here. And the assignment for this uh, unit that I'm going to give you eventually is really not that long. The way to do well on this is to do some of the stuff out of the textbook. Even if you're out of the habit of doing stuff out of the textbook, even if you've never opened the textbook, for this unit you really should. There's good questions in there. All the answers are in the back. Okay?